like to welcome everybody here today to this NSLS Last Light event. We're here today to celebrate the remarkable history of the NSLS. After 32 years of operations, the National Synchrotron Light Source will shut down for the final time this afternoon in just a few minutes. And it's really just been a remarkable tenure over those years, serving a very broad a range of scientific fields and a very engaged and productive user community. Over the years, more than 57,000 users have come and do, done experiments here at the NSLS. <clears throat> that research has resulted in more than 17,000 publications. More than 7,000 protein crystal structures have been solved and deposited in the protein data bank. And two Nobel Prizes have been awarded based in large part on work carried out here at NSLS. So by any measure, it's just been a remarkable record of scientific accomplishment over the last several decades. In addition to that, just as importantly, the NSLS staff working with the users and the other experts here at the laboratory and really around the world have uh, also pioneered a number of advances in accelerator and beamline science and technology. And these, these advances are what has made that remarkable record of scientific accomplishment possible. <clears throat> in my own case, I became introduced to synchrotron radiation in a series of experiments my, me and my collaborators did just about 20 years ago, just down the hall on Beamline X25, where we were trying to use coherent x-rays to look at dynamics and materials for the first time. And I think that's a good but small example of another important legacy of the NSLS, which is how it's impacted the life of so many people who are now involved in the field of synchrotron radiation around the world. So there are many important legacies that we're here to celebrate and take note of today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Steve. And um, first of all, I would like to acknowledge and thank everybody who is uh, here today uh, in the control room. Uh, the folks who came from far away, very far away in some cases, the folks who are sitting out in the uh, video rooms watching, uh, and everyone else uh, participating. I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, your sharing this moment with us. It's a big moment, um, a somewhat emotional moment, uh, but also a pleasure for all of us to participate in uh, together. In that same spirit, I'd like to uh, similarly acknowledge and thank um, the folks who had the idea for this source back in the dark ages, more than 30 or 40 years ago, some of whom are still here. Um, uh, it's an amazing accomplishment, an amazing source. They put it together, they thought of it, they built it. And then uh, all of us who uh, have run this place for more than 30 years, um, many uh, still here now, um, another amazing accomplishment. And then, as Steve said, the thousands and thousands of users. Um, it's a great pleasure to acknowledge and thank um, all of you uh, for, for being here for this moment and also for contributing so much, as has been mentioned, to science and um, more broadly to the world's uh, moving forward. Uh, in my opinion, um, NSLS is the most impactful synchrotron in the world. Um, it has had an amazing impact. Uh, nationally, internationally, Steve mentioned that uh, in part. It was the first, uh, they're, they're asking for beam on the phone there. They, they want an extension of five more minutes. <laughs> and if I just keep talking, <laughs> maybe, they'll, maybe they'll get it. <laughs> and Gary, from X26, 10 minutes. NSLS was the first dedicated synchrotron uh, ring. It was also the first to use the, the Chasman Green Lattice, and it set the standard for synchrotron radiation sources across the world uh, ever since. It's had an amazing impact. As Steve mentioned, essentially all of the leaders in this field, more broadly than synchrotron radiation, science leaders generally, but all of the leaders in this field have, in one way or another, either started their careers here, passed through here, spent some time here, learned from being here, uh, and it's had an incredible impact uh, over, really over decades. It's a real a pleasure and a real honor uh, uh, to be associated with it. In addition to all of the breakthroughs which have been mentioned and, and the Nobel Prizes uh, uh, as well, uh, this, is, this storage ring started something called synchrotron fever. And uh, if you remember, and maybe you don't, back in the 80s and 90s, there was a time after the light source came around that synchrotrons started blossoming, they started appearing everywhere. Uh, and uh, in Japan, it was at a meeting in Japan that we were told this was an example of synchrotron fever and it started here. Um, the, 
I think I have to also say something about the impact that Light Source has had on the lab, which has been enormous uh, over the years. I had changed, NSLS changed the character of Brookhaven Laboratory. It was always Brookhaven, a multidisciplinary lab. It's always been a, a leader in lots of different uh, areas. But this was the first major facility uh, in basic energy sciences, and it changed the game. It changed the character of the lab, and it's completely changed our future. Uh, when we look ahead, we're talking about a, a range of facilities now, a range of different kinds of accelerators, uh, including NSLS tube and also RIC uh, to ERIC, and who knows what, what comes after that. It's had an enormous impact on our laboratory. Uh, it's, it's changed it completely uh, since, since uh, it started. So um, I have to make a personal comment, um, the least relevant of all. But NSLS is the, is, happens to be the thing that brought me to the lab 30 years ago, and I can tell you why. It was the incredible and intense excitement that I felt about the possibility of doing experiments here. That you, <laughs> you were lucky. You could wake up early in the morning, really early in the morning, and come in here, and you had this feeling that almost no matter what you did, it would be new, that there would be new things that came out of this just because of the increase in brightness relative to other places. It was an incredibly, an incredibly exciting place uh, to be. Uh, and uh, that sense of excitement, I, I believe, has carried forward even, even today, even in the last 10 minutes. And if I just keep talking, we might get 10 or 12 minutes. Um, so it was a game changer uh, for us and for the laboratory. And in that sense, turning it off is a little bit sad. I mean, I can't help it. I'm seeing some of, seeing some of these old timers. It makes me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, uh, you know, this is how labs work. Uh, and, uh, and in our future is NSLS2, which is the biggest, brightest machine in the world. And a lot of these, not all the same character characteristics will be true, but a lot of these same excitements, a lot of these same characteristics will be true there too. We're starting, we're starting over, we're starting at, at a big new synchrotron, and that's incredibly <laughs> exciting. So um, I personally, uh, and mostly pretty happy about uh, uh, the day today, very excited about NSLS2, also about the lab's future, looking ahead, uh, and it's a pleasure to have all of you here today to turn, the, to turn the switch on NSLS. Thank you again for coming, and thank you all for your effort all these years. So before I turn it over to Gary to turn the switch, I just want to acknowledge the hard work of the operators and the technicians who have been working really tirelessly and with great ingenuity over the last several years to keep NSLS going at really peak performance in order to best serve the user community. Uh, it's been very challenging at times, and I, I think it's uh, really remarkable how well they've done. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm glad that we'll be able to count on the same crew to keep us uh, uh, served well as we go forward into NSLS. Too. Uh, also, over these last few months, it's been, uh, been nice to see the halls just sort of bursting with users, actually, from around the world uh, who've come here to take advantage of every last photon. Unfortunately, we're just about at that last photon moment, and so for that, I will turn it over to Gary Weiner to uh, start the shutdown. There's still a minute. It's the minute. <laughs> <laughs> the minute to talk to Attention all personnel, attention all personnel. NSLS shutdown will begin in 40 seconds. The last 40 seconds of light here at the National Synchrotron Light Source. I've been an operator here for 25 years, and I just want to say that it's been an honor and a privilege for me to work here, to do the work that we've done, and to work with all the great people who I've known here over the years. 20 seconds to go. <laughs> 15. <laughs> attention, attention all personnel, attention all personnel. X-ray and UV shutters will be disabled at this time for the last time. Thank you all very much. off the beam available sign since beam is no longer available.
Shutters are disabled. All right, on the x-ray ring, I will now open up the insertion devices. All the in-vacuum undulators have been commanded open. I have to wait a little while for them to actually open. I'll come over here and I will ramp down the UV ring. Turn off the feedbacks. The UV ring is now ramping down. Turn off the feedback for the x-ray ring. All right, we will now begin to step down the RF amplitude. You can see as we get closer, the x-ray current will start to decay out. drop. <coughs> On the UV side, we'll simply trip the RF. And the beam is gone. And that's it.